success on the European soil, but you feel he's not too far away. Well, yesterday it was Nathan Aspinall who set the bar very high with that stunning performance against Ryan Joyce. And once again, it's Aspinall who has set the bar today, not in terms of his scoring power or in terms of the performance, but what about the result? What about the upset beating Michael Van Gerwen? for whom there will be no fourth title here in Gibraltar. That's the big story, but you feel there might be plenty more stories to come, and these two may well deliver. Rob Malarkey in the chair for this one, and alongside me, it's a first opportunity to say buenos dias, Paul Nicholson. Buenos dias, Rob Malarkey. And what a start, you're absolutely right. Going into next year, no more Euro European tours this year, so is this the biggest barren spell of Michael Van Gerwen's career on the Euro Tour? Well, yes, that's the other issue. It's a point well made, actually, because he won four of the first five Euro Tour events of the year, but he has drawn blanks ever since. Well, first leg, Peter to throw first. Game on. As George Noble gets us underway, I think there was a bit of a relaxed mood for these two, having a bit of a consultation just before the dart starts 140. now they sense an even better opportunity yes Michael van Gerwen is out and the winner of this one will now play Nathan Aspinall but that is the problem you get rid of one you've got another one to face Aspinall right now is going to be one of the favourites for this title now well automatically yeah no doubt about it 60. and another lesson learned another life lesson learned for me today as well always listen to your children Paul because before I headed out to Gibraltar, I said to my little boy, eight years old, I said, who do you think is going to win the darts this weekend? And I just assumed he might just say MVG without even thinking about it. But he, he, he looked at me and he thought long and hard. And after a few moments of thinking, you could see the cogs wearing. He just said, Nathan Aspinall. And I said, OK. And we left it at that. Well, if he wins today, you're going to be asking him that question a lot more in the future. Five. My very own crystal ball. Everybody should have one. My crystal ball has been working off and on this year. Definitely didn't get it right at the World Cup where Peter Wright won the title. I said Northern Ireland would do well and they got dumped in round one. I did say that Damon Hetter would do well in Australia though and that, that was pretty fruitful. But these guys know a lot about each other this year and in previous seasons as 100. well. It's a tight contest right now. It's probably the most even one of an afternoon where we're going to see 15 seeds yeah Kim Hybrex the uh, sole surviving qualifier former European 16. Tour champion himself up against James Wade in our third match of the day and it's a big match for Hybrex as well because he's looking to force his way into the European Championship field a win today for Kim Hybrex and that will be mission accomplished as far as he is concerned an anxious wait back at home for Ross Smith today that's the simple formula, the very simple equation that faces us today. All the permutations have been ironed out, bar one. It's actually good for Ross that he knows exactly what needs to happen. It's not one of those silly scenarios, but this could be silly. It's almost perfect. Ross Smith knows it's out of his hands. He's going to have 30 minutes of sheer anxiety. Yeah, and he'll be waving a big James Wade flag at home. Here, Peter Wright. Has got down to 26. Sulevich is looking at 92, now 72, so he can't get 60. into position. Did you go on 26? Double four coming in. Yeah, yeah, good adjustment. Right. Just looked at that Second flight inside, inside the 13 first. single Game on. and just flew it over the top of it because it was a really good line. Got the weight perfectly as well. Yesterday, Peter Wright, playing against Dyson Perotti, he went on the stage 100. in his usual fashion, but during the game, he looked steely. I think he went up there with an attitude of, I'm going to beat you 6-0, and he looked genuinely cheesed off when he only beat him 6-1. Yeah, 100. he's uh, set himself high standards this weekend, it seems. Uh, Sulevich himself had a 6-1 win against Wessel Nyman, the young Dutchman, 19 years old. So fairly comfortable for both players to get through to this stage. They did meet fairly recently as well in the uh, International Darts Open in Risa. It was a third round match that day as well. Peter Wright coming out on top by six. To three. One of six meetings they've had on the European Tour and Peter Wright has won four of them. Make of that what you will. It used to be the case that a lot of players were uncomfortable playing against Mensur. Because he was a lot more changeable with his pace and 
more often than not he was quite slow but the more people have played Mensah over the course of the last three seasons they've got used to the idiosyncrasies they're now commonplace 58 and the reason they lose against Sulevich more often than not is because he's good maybe a good omen here for Sulevich as well because the last time he beat Wright on the European Tour was in Denmark 100. in 2018 beaten 6-4 and went on to win the title well there's a, a message I've never seen before she wants that to be a, that's Liz that's Liz Yates she, oh, she's yes. from the States and she wants to be adopted by the Germans any particular Country. German or the German one, embassy 161 you mean I'll as a nationality I'll have to get some sort of clarification on that well I've got to get clarification on the fact that Sulevich has left a bogey number that never happens he doesn't make mathematical mistakes 99 he's haphazardly put himself on a bogey number here though and Peter Wright will be loving that 62 away from a first break of throw that's the position 60. that Aspinall was in early against 62. Van Gerwen where he had a stack of breaks to throw to put himself way ahead and give himself the opportunity to win double 16 for Wright then to go 2-0 up 30. So you require 103. Missed out at double 16 for a 2 0 lead. Just gives Sulevich the chance here, but he's looking at a very tricky 103. Oh no. Oh, now. I feel his pain. It's wow. horrible hitting a double 15 when you need a single. I've been there. No, it's a horrible feeling. And boy, Did he was hoping for a shot at double 32. 14 there. Yeah. Well, we've seen Sulevich leave himself a bogey number. We've seen him hit the double when he wanted a single. Leg. And Peter, Peter Wright right. didn't stand on the ceremony too long there either, did he? 2-0. Third leg, Peter, to throw first. Well, Sulevich simply Game has on. to put that one behind him. And move on. Hasn't really settled yet, Mensur. You feel there's still a bedding in process going on here for him. You said to me at the start of the match 95. that on the walk on, Mensa looked a little tired. Yeah, I thought so. Sometimes the, the constant heat of the Gibraltar region, right at the southern tip of Europe, it can, it can sap your energy. It's really tough. You've got to drink a lot of water and you've got to get as much fresh air as possible because the practice room is quite stuffy. And as a lot of our viewers know... We can't have air conditioning in the practice room or on the stage because it Easy messes fire. with the dark flights. So you've got to get used to the heat. Yeah, it's a little bit more oppressive today as well. It's It was a, a very cloudy, dismal start. But the 140. clouds soon disappeared. The sun shone through and it's very warm. I think it's the warmest day of the weekend so far. I'd agree with that. I was out on the water this morning looking for some dolphins. Found them. and Good place to go to find them, to be honest. Absolutely. Looked over at the rock and you could barely see it. It was had its own little ecosystem around it of grey clouds. Looked very murky. And I understand you were working on a little feature featuring uh, well the two ladies on stage right now. Yeah, it's great to have both of the ladies on stage. Usually they have uh, one gentleman on the left and the lady on the right, but they've got both of the ladies on there for this game. And they were on the boat with us and we've done a little chat with them, a little interview for the Dart Show, which will be aired Resume later in the week. 161. Very good. Excellent. Almost perfect. Seen a 146 missed on double 13 81. and now a 161 on the ball. Can Wright do to Sudovic what Aspinall was doing to Van Gerwen by taking a 3 0 lid? He needs the ball. And he's further 35. away. 35. Major required 25. Well, this should be Sulevich's chance to get the leg on the board and also find a break of throw that he needs as well. Just seemed to lurch into that one. Nine. And that was off target as well. The Did worrying thing there, Rob, uh, was the 46. nine. It was perilously close to the treble. You should be going for the fat piece of that single, and it was very close to the treble. Very precarious indeed. But right, should take advantage. Plenty of room. And does so. That's a lovely leg. kiss off the flight. Wig Minter to throw first. Game on. Yeah, once again, just making the most of a Sulevich slip up there, as he did in the previous leg. A 
That's 17 data backed up by an 18 data. It's not stellar stuff from Peter Wright, but he'll be more than happy with the way the scoreboard's looking right now. 140. He is, of course, using a fresh set of darts today. And by fresh, yes, I mean different. But the way he's played in the last 24 hours, Peter, these really work. They're going in with such a lovely thump in the board. There's no flail at the end because the early part of Peter's career he used to have this problem where the, the point would be to the left of the flight, so it would kink at the end. And he is constantly been trying to correct that with grips, with different weights of barrel. And Peter uses one of the longest barrels in the game. Look at Mensua's, it's it's got a little 59. bit of width about it in the middle, but Peter's is long, thin, straight, but it's a very, very long barrel. It's probably a good centimetre longer than the ones that I use. It's got that uncanny knack of getting those darts 100. close together. And that's why he's so good. It's not just to do with the scoring phase as well, because you want to compact these darts and try and get 180s. But when you have a dart that's right on the wire for a double, 96. you want to be able to get it really close and use it as a guide. And Peter is one of the best in the world at that. Ninety-three. There's a few noises coming out of the mouth of Snakebite after when he throws a really bad dart. That's yeah. two at the bullseye now that have been outside the 25. Not quite as vocal or vociferous as uh, Michael Van Gogh was at times against Nathan Aspinall in our opening match of the day. Now then, Mencio. Maybe that will just breathe new life into this particular match because he needs something just to get himself going, I think. Although, Game he won't get the break. opportunity because Peter Wright right. has found a 108 checkout and that's more like it. A 15 dart and again it's very first. assured, it's very confident Game stuff on. and well Sullivan, you just wonder whether things are just beginning to catch up with him. He had that success in Austria at the end of August, he had that terrific run to the recent Pro Tour final as well. 100. And he's just not really at the races so far. If that is the case, is that going to have an effect on his assault on the Grand Prix? You'd probably say no. I'm going to say no right now because he's just at a maximum. <laughs> but the thing about Dublin is you've got two pro tours, one on the Friday, one on the Saturday, and the Grand Prix starts next Sunday. So after that, it's 100. one game per day. And that's, they're the tournaments that the players really, really like. The match play, the Worlds, the Grand Prix. One game a day, and they can focus for just one huge effort. That's what makes these tournaments so hard to win. Because on a Sunday, you've got to win four times. Well, dare we dream of the nine data from Mensu. Six perfect darts so far. He's in position. And this would be the perfect way to... 131. Is he going? 141. Here we go. Six years on and more since Ross Smith here in Gibraltar. And he finds the treble, but the wrong one. Well, seven perfect darts of sorts. Made that 135. Interesting leave. 107 leave. I'm not quite sure what the thinking was there, but I think Mencio's got to the stage now where, you know, anything will do. He might not even get a shot at it. After nine, he's on six. Peter Wright is on 25, but only just. What an effort to steal that leg away from Sudovic. Maybe this is why, because you can see plenty of that. He says Mensua. George says Sulevic. Well, a curious thing. We have Mensua throwing six perfect darts. He then Game left on. himself six. Peter Wright steps in looking at 170. Missed the bullseye for the big finish. And then Mensua steps in and finds double three with his third dart. I don't think anybody could have scripted that. 58. I don't think I've ever seen a 10 dart or on double three. Seen one on double one a couple of times. It was actually done last weekend by Conan Whitehead. He went back to back ten daughters and one of them was on double one. One hundred and forty. Conan Whitehead, yeah, man, we've seen on the European tour this year. Affectionately known as the Michael Van Gerwen ten daughter because he was the first person to do it. But then again, he's got plenty named after him, so maybe we should call it something else. One hundred and eighty. Well, Mitchell sort of Sulevic is not, as I mentioned yesterday, a man who is renowned for his one eighties, but he's finding. That treble 20 bed on a very regular 100. basis all of a sudden. 
when we saw in the last game someone get a huge lead and then all of a sudden Van Gerwen couldn't miss for two or three legs pretty much the same in this game right now Sulevic is starting to charge and for the second time in this match he's left 1-6-3 curious very curious indeed however it may well be that Mencio has six darts from 1-6-3 anyway and he has yeah Peter needed that 57 to leave a finish I'm surprised he didn't go for the 51 to leave the 170 maybe he thought it was a, a do or die shot get the treble up I'm pretty much toasted anyway because Sulevic is going to come back for 66 yeah again it's the margins for Mensur as well he was looking for the treble to leave 145 okay, Mensur requires two darts, 66 these are the sorts of advantages he needs to give himself Needs to give himself every possible opportunity. However, that will do very nicely indeed. Double six. He took out double three last time. Double six. He's is found as six well. And that's a bit more like it. And a bit Seven more reassuring for Camp. Game on. Do you think Mensa Sulevic's ability to hit treble 14 is underrated? <laughs> you know, if you think about winning in Vienna for Mensa. 100. He won it with a 70 checkout on treble 14, double 14. He did. And... He does spend a lot of time wiggling those fingers before he goes for a treble 14. And I, think it, I think it was a 14 dart leg as well, that. From 100. I wonder what 14 is in any sort of Slav Slavic language. It probably oh, is Slavic. Mensua. Um, I know what 15 100. is through the tennis scoring, but... Uh, gosh. I'm not going to Google this. I should know this. I'll work it out. Yeah, most players know what 20 is in a few Seven. languages. I think 14 in Russian is... Chetil Natset, so it's probably something like that. I'm glad you said that. 135. I'll have to ask Anastasia de Romislova the next time I see her. Yeah. The best Russian dart player in the world. And another player leaving a bogey number. What is going on? Calculators out, guys. 100. Doesn't matter though. 166 is a nice number if you want to try and set it up. You always think in 134 if you're on that number. But from this position, Sudovic will be thinking if I can get a 140 here, I've got a realistic chance of getting this leg. He doesn't want to leave himself on 131. So he may switch here. 19's a bolt. No, the reason he's done that is because he's given himself an out now by getting a 25 or a bull on the first start, but he's got to rely on Peter not taking the 108 again. Got it earlier. Can get it again. Has to readjust. Back to the left of the hockey. And once he's more, he's on done it. Flag. That's Peter clinical from Snakebite. That was close. You were close. Chetty and that's in Russian. It's Chetlinayest in Serbian. I was on the right line. On the right lines there. Anyway, whatever language you speak, this is the Gibraltar Dance Trophy. And Peter Wright is closing in on a place in the quarterfinals. I don't think he'll take too much satisfaction from the performance. I think it is all about the result today for either of these two. Sulevic has started to breathe life into this match, but maybe, just maybe, he left himself too much to do trailing 4 0 as he did. One of the beautiful things about this game is that there is a language of darts. 140! Spoken with the dart and the board. I've always wondered if the PDC would ever entertain the referees speaking in the home language. So obviously Gibraltar, you would do it maybe half Spanish, <laughs> half English. That's a tall order for George Noble and Ritz <laughs> Bray, I've got to say. Do they've, got enough, they've got enough going on really, <laughs> Paul, without having to read the score in three languages. Oh, this is true. This is true. 65. They've got to monitor the chalkers, they've got to monitor the crowd, look after the welfare of the players, keep the players in line. 
and keep them behind the hockey as well sometimes when they move left and right. I think it would disrupt the momentum as well if you sh sh shouted 180 in three languages before allowing the players to take 170! Video call 150. There's some way to finish the match. There is a great piece of footage on the uh, internet, by the way, of Russ Bray shouting 180 in various languages. He recorded it a couple of years ago at Ali Pali with the assistance of the aforementioned Anastasia Dobromislava. And he's trying to do it backwards as well, 16. which was very, very 31. odd. He's a talented guy. 31 for Sulevich, 28. You know where he's going here. That's the guide. Yeah, you've shown the flag, and says Sulevich. You can never write him off, can you? Peter to throw fast. Okay, he's Game on. very much on the back foot. And this is still very much Peter Wright's match to lose, but right off Mensur Sudovic at your peril. It's looking almost a certainty for it to be the same result as Risa. The reason I say that is because Wright has the darts and st started with a max. It forces Mensur Sudovic to follow him in. And he may well do so. 180 plays, 180. Great start to leg nine. Peter Wright's opportunity for nine perfect darts has fallen by the wayside. 100. Still advantage right. Sweat going down the left cheek of Sulevic. 100. And he matches the ton of Snakey. What a great camera shot that was as well. You could just see that little bead of sweat cascading down the left side of Sulevic's face. But this is... Peter Wright's match to lose now, so in the ascendancy once again. Gets himself down to a manageable 81. He'll be a little bit disappointed with that third dart, but still firm favourite now. Yeah, when you've got the darts to win 26. the match, this is where you really want to be. You want to be sub 100 after nine. Puts massive pressure on your opponent. You could take care of it in 12. Double six for Peter Wright. Not there 69. yet, but mercifully from his point of view, Mensur Sulevich is stranded on 195. That's one thing you don't want to be called in darts. Merciful. There's no mercy in this game. Straight into that single five again, but he's recovered well. On this occasion. You require 12. Well, this for a 13 darter for Peter Wright. A 14 darter will do very nicely indeed as well, and that's exactly Shot. what he's got. And, the match. and Peter, Peter Wright, Wright remains on course for a